This is coming out on DVD. Yeah. We're going to sell a million. Can I get it from some old Chinese guy? I'm carrying Not even that good. Good evening. Relax, unwind, take the weight off your feet, and welcome to lounging with the Fighting Nightingales. We'd love for you to lounge with us for a short while, but before you get too comfortable and drift away on clouds of pure flamenco bliss. Permit me to introduce you to the band. Sitting behind me is my brother Mark Nightingale, reluctant blues man, post-Tudor Renaissance man, maestro of the Hispanic guitar and all-round musical Zorro. He bids you welcome. And on my right is my father Peter Nightingale, the drum doctor Frankenstein, reanimator and reassembler of discarded and decapitated percussive instrumentia, and supreme grandmaster of what we in the Fighting Nightingales have come to know as the Turkish Bongo. He bids you welcome. And as for me, well, I just read things out loud from a big black book. I also bid you welcome. Thank you. Individually, we are nothing. Collectively, we are the Fighting Nightingales, and tonight we be lounging. Well, welcome to an evening with the Fighting Nightingales. The first thing that we're going to do tonight is I'm sure we've all wondered what it was like to be a Greek god. I know I don't have to think about that too much. <laughs> but even being a Greek god isn't um, all it's cracked up to be. So we, this, our first piece is about a sort of slightly minor Greek god, and it's called Hephaestus, the put-upon god. that there is bullying in heaven. To be more specific, there is bullying in Olympus. You would be forgiven for thinking that equality with gods was something to be grasped if you were a god yourself, but this is not the case. Consider the example of Hephaestus, the god of fire, metalwork, and sculpture. As god of flame, he was the keeper of heaven's forges. He made powerful weapons for the gods, yet he was every god's bitch. Make no mistake, if you or I saw him, then we would quake and shit ourselves and beg his pardon or else fall at his smoke-stained feet and worship him. But we are not gods of Olympus. In Olympus there is a pecking order, a hierarchy determined by raw power and beauty, and Hephaestus is at the bottom of the pile. When Hephaestus walks the earth, the earth shudders. But the tremor is irregular, for Hephaestus walks with a limb. He also bears the distinction of being the only physically ugly god in Olympus. You can understand why Hephaestus preferred the company of human beings and automatons of his own devising to the fellowship of his own divine relations. Hephaestus was born without a father. His mother was Hera, the wife of Zeus. Hera conceived and birthed Hephaestus by pure force of will in protest against her husband's infidelities. Hera was a powerful goddess, but not powerful enough, it seemed, to bestow beauty on her child through the transmission of her own divine genetic material. And how did Zeus feel about his own unplanned bastard stepson? I suppose Zeus must have loved Hephaestus in his own way because he married Hephaestus to Aphrodite, the most physically desirable creature in existence. But then again, it might not have been love. Zeus was also a pragmatist. With the obvious exception of her father Zeus, every male god on Olympus wanted Aphrodite for himself. So to avoid a civil war, Zeus married his most beautiful daughter to his only ugly son. The other deities would respect a marriage where the magister was the father of the gods. No, not necessarily. The thing you need to understand about the gods of Olympus is that the gods of Olympus aren't necessarily nicer than you or me. That's not what makes them gods of Olympus. They mostly rule by enormously elevated force, fear, charm and guile. That's what makes them gods of Olympus. In all these qualities they are better than we are, but they are not necessarily nicer. Hephaestus' marriage was a joke. His wife was seeing Ares, the god of war, behind her husband's back. 
Hephaestus, while perfectly capable of crushing you or I between his thumb and forefinger, was not equipped to fight for his wife against a god of war without guaranteeing his own destruction. Now Hephaestus understood something very powerful. He knew that tactically orchestrated ridicule could be as powerful as a thunderbolt. So when Helios, the sun god, informed on Ares and Aphrodite and Hephaestus discovered them together in his bed, lost and exhausted post-coital unconsciousness, he went to his workshop and fashioned a chain that could not be broken. He tied the adulterous gods to the bed and summoned the rest of Olympus to observe their mutual disgrace. Now nobody likes to be laughed at especially not a god of war or a goddess of sex and love. Ares and Aphrodite were humiliated. Hephaestus was perfectly happy in those moments to leave them where they were, forever if need be. Poseidon, the sea god, talked him out of it. Hephaestus let the lovers go. The lovers were forced to pay a hefty fine. Hephaestus and Aphrodite were divorced shortly afterward. Hephaestus married again. He married the goddess Aglaia, one third of the three graces, charity if you're interested. I'd like to think it was a happier marriage. Hephaestus had a son. When the boy was born, he was half man and half snake. Uglier by far than his father ever was. Technically more monster than God. I would like to think that his father treated him better than he had been treated. But that's probably not the case. Such is the way of the gods of Olympus. Thank you.